So now it's time for a row reduced echelon form challenge. And it's a fantastic question to think about. What we know by now is that if we have a matrix in the row reduced echelon form, then it's very easy to determine the null space. But can we go back? If we know the null space, if we're given the null space, can we determine the row reduced echelon form? So I don't want to tell you whether the answer is yes or no, but you should realize that knowing the null space actually tells us a lot about the matrix. The question is, is it enough to determine all of the row reduced echelon form? And if, even if it is, do you have a strategy for doing so? But let me give you an example of what the null space tells us about the matrix. So I think it's best to start with this entry of the null space for the example we considered not so long ago. And when you look at a vector like this and you realize that it's in the null space, then you immediately know that column three must equal zero, must be the zero column. Why? Because this vector is telling us that zero of the first column plus zero of the second, forget all the zeros, plus the third column equals zero. So you can extract very valuable information from this element and that's the third column is zero. So, so right away, simply by looking at this element of the null space, we're able to determine a column in the matrix. What does this element tell us? Well, this element clearly tells us that the second, second column is twice the first. And I think it's also obvious, although I may not be able to put it in two words exactly right now, that the first column is the pivot column. Now, I think I can. If the first column was not a pivot column, then there would never be any number here reflect, uh, re expressing one of the later columns in terms of the first column. So we know the first column of the row reduced echelon form. It must be one followed by all zeros. And we also know that the second column is twice the first column. So that's a statement that's true, not only about the row reduced echelon form of the matrix, but about the original matrix as well. It's just all of this information is contained in the null space. All of the relationships, all of the existing relationships among the columns are available in this expression for the null space. So we know that the second column must be twice the first and that for the row reduced echelon form of the matrix actually reveals to us that the first column is the pivot column, therefore it's one followed by all zeros. So the second column must be two followed by all zeros. And then looking at this, we know that the third column is all zeros. And then maybe looking at this column, we'll, at this element of the null space, we'll be able to determine the next column of the uh, row reduced session on form of the matrix and so forth. So maybe it's possible, <coughs> excuse me, after all, to reconstruct the row reduced session on form from the null space. But of course, that's only clear if it is clear. If the null space is given in this perfect form, this perfect form that in its own right kind of looks like the row reduced session on form of something because you have these leading uh, ones or minus ones. So maybe without using the word reduce, just the row echelon form of something. I don't know what, but it certainly has a very special structure. But what if the null space is given in a way that doesn't have that special structure? Then would you be able to determine the row reduced echelon form of the matrix from the null space? This could be a perfectly legitimate way to define the null space. In fact, to specify any space in R6, we just have to indicate what its basis is. And this clearly specifies that these two vectors form the basis and that the null space is the span of these two vectors. So this is a perfectly legitimate, legitimate way to specify a vector space, to say it's the null space of some matrix. And then the interesting question is, A, is there enough information here to determine the row reduced echelon form of the matrix, and B, what would be the strategy for doing so? Now, do I want to give you a hint? Uh, no, I don't want to give you a hint. <laughs> so it's a wonderful question to think about, and I think you'll learn, uh, you'll, you'll have a, it's not a very difficult question, but it'll feel great if you answer it, 
And even if you don't, you will learn a heck of a lot simply by thinking about this question. Good luck and enjoy.